Tonight, new video of a powerful truck explosion in Boyle Heights. The street still shut down as investigators try to figure out what caused that truck to blow up. That explosion happened right next to a gas station, which then was quickly evacuated. And thankfully, no one was hurt in this wild blast. CBS 2's Lori Perez was one of the first reporters at the scene for us. Hi, Lori. Hi, Crystal and Jeff. I want to show you right away what is left of the truck. And let me tell you, it is not much. It is hard to believe the driver and his passenger inside the cab were not at all hurt. They made it into this gas station and parked right after the truck blew up. The scary moment was caught on a dash camera, and it is something else. Caught on dash cam and posted on social media, that's the remarkable moment a truck exploded in Boyle Heights during the evening rush hour. We blew up. Right there. Are you guys okay? Yes, we're all right. You can hear the shock. This is cell phone video of the chaos seconds afterwards at the busy intersection of Soto and Olympic. I thought it was a bomb. Other people too, like it was a bomb. A bomb went off. You know, everyone was just kind of looking around. Neighbors and customers inside the nearby Starbucks ran outside. It was really loud. It was really, really scary. Yeah. All the apartments, like, it just shook like if it was an earthquake. No one was hurt, but debris rained down on and around the crowded corner. Drivers abandoned their cars as police and fire evacuated nearby businesses so Hazmat and the bomb squad could make sure the area was safe. LAPD initially said the explosion was possibly caused by a propane tank in the back of what LAFD says is a privately owned box truck. The driver said they recycle scrap metal. All kinds could be seen on the street. It was too close for Lulu and Emily Lamelli, who rushed here after husband and dad Jose called home. Looking at all this looks pretty scary, so to know her dad was right next to the car. The block of Olympic from Soda to Boyle remains closed off, though there are now cleaning crews. It looks like close to clearing things up. The good news is LAPD says after the bomb squad and major crimes came out, it appears there is no criminal element to this. It appears that this was an accident and a very close call, but nothing else. We are live in Boyle Heights tonight. I'm Lori Perez, CBS 2 News. Thank you, Lori. He wasn't going to be a victim. A South Pasadena jewelry store employee outarmed an armed robber. The crook was targeting something very specific, and it almost cost the store owner his life. CBS 2's Jeff Nguyen joins us now live from South Pasadena, where he spoke to the business store, store owner about how they turned the tables on the robbers. Well, the attempted robbery happened at this store where the suspects ran through these doors and then down that way, which happens to be right across the street from the police department. Security video captured the man with the red ball cap pulling out a knife before a struggle with Gene Bujekian. No remorse. This guy had dead eyes. He was ready to kill. It happened this morning at Vana Watch and Jewelry in South Pasadena. After they walked in, the two men made a beeline for the display case with high-end watches. Bujekian says the guy with the red hat demanded the Rolex watches. Uh, he actually lunged at me, and I, I blocked him, and then I grabbed his hand, and I... You know, try to shuffle with him a little bit. From the video, you can see Bujekian's nephew, who was behind the counter, pull out a gun and both would be robbers hightail it out of the store. Luckily, he pulled the gun out. Without the gun, I think I would have been dead. We want to slow down the video so you can get a good look at the suspects. The guy with the Boston Red Sox hat is about 5'8", around 170 pounds, with a stocky build. His alleged accomplice is about 6'2", around 200 pounds, with a thin build, some facial hair, and bangs down his forehead. Bujekian says he came out from behind the counter because the men's mannerisms seemed odd. We try to treat everybody equally. It doesn't matter who you are. You know, you're my client. You, you know, you, you came to my uh, store. You, you know, I'm going to respect you as my client. After having this knife pulled on him, he says he's grateful his nephew was behind the counter. You know, hindsight, I could have been dead. You know, somebody could have killed me. So at this point, I think I'll stay behind the counter. As you can see from the video, the staff here chased after the two guys who they say got into a green Chevy Malibu. If you happen to recognize those two men, police would like to hear from you. Live in South Pasadena, Jeff Nguyen, CBS2 News.
All right, Jeff, thank you. Tonight, police in Ontario are still trying to figure out if an attack at a restaurant is racially motivated. Security cameras captured it all. This happened on Wednesday at the Waba Grill. And police say after the victim placed his order, the suspect started an argument that included a racial slur, then pushed him to the ground. Both men said to be cooperating with police. The local Jewish community is on edge tonight after a security scare outside a North Hollywood synagogue. Police are investigating a disturbing photo that showed up on social media. The question is, was it a threat or was it a prank? CBS 2's Hermela Awagari is live outside the synagogue. Hermela. Good evening. The photo was taken right here in front of the synagogue, and it was just before 4 o'clock, so it was daylight. And right above the spot, you will see a surveillance camera. We spoke with members of this synagogue, and they tell us they believe the entire incident was caught on camera. This eerie photo in front of a synagogue is making its way around social media, provoking reactions from fear to anger and disgust. Anytime you see a picture like that, you have to take it seriously. And there's also federal laws governing interference and harassment of religious institutions and affiliated buildings. User Noah Oaknine on Facebook says he took the picture himself Friday afternoon, writing he saw a man with his head covered, sword in his hand, making threatening gestures towards the Chabad. It could be a hoaxer. It could be someone who has a non-extremist beef with a... Uh, the synagogue. Brian Levin is a domestic terrorism expert. He says tensions are high among some in the Jewish community after the mass synagogue shooting in Pittsburgh, which was followed by smaller hate crimes in the Los Angeles area. Synagogue security is a big deal, as well as other houses of worship uh, that we're seeing nationally. We spoke with CARE, the Council on American Islamic Relations, about the photo. Uh, and we just want uh, our Jewish neighbors to know that we stand in solidarity with them that everyone should have uh, the freedom and the peace to go and worship uh, without threat of harassment or, or fear. CARE also tells us they don't know if the person has any ties to the Muslim community, but are just glad that no one was hurt. Police say they are investigating, but at this time don't have any reason to believe the photo is part of a credible threat. Reporting live in North Hollywood, Hermel Aragawi, CBS 2 News. Thank you, Hermela. Thousands of LAUSD teachers are preparing for a huge march tomorrow in downtown LA. The teachers and district are in a contract dispute. Among the issues on the table, class sizes, nurses, and counselors at every school and salary increases. The district is offering to add teachers, reduce class sizes in some communities, and give teachers a 6% pay raise. A federal judge in Texas ruled today that the Affordable Care Act, it's known as Obamacare, mm -hmm. is unconstitutional and should be shut down. Now the ruling has set off another political battle over health care coverage. CBS2 political reporter Dave Bryan joins us to tell us what this means for everyone, right? Well, needless to say, everyone from Governor Brown down to other officials on mm -hmm. the state level, they all oppose what happened today and they will protest it in court. California Attorney General Javier Becerra will be leading the 16 Democrat states in the District of Columbia in trying to reverse today's ruling in the higher courts and save the Affordable Care Act from being shut down. At stake, he says, 133 million Americans with pre-existing conditions and 20 million who depend on Obamacare for health care. Tonight, the Affordable Care Act, otherwise known as Obamacare, is in big trouble again. Late Friday, a federal judge in Texas ruled that the entire Obamacare law is unconstitutional, and that opinion, if upheld by higher federal courts, would overturn and abolish the entire Affordable Care Act. Loyola Law School professor Jessica Levinson says the stakes in this case are high. If this ruling stands, people with pre-existing health conditions will be penalized. People who have health problems will pay higher insurance premiums. And it will be appealed by a coalition of Democratic states led by California and State Attorney General Javier Becerra, who released this statement. Today's misguided ruling will not deter us. Our coalition will continue to fight in court for the health and well-being of all Americans. On the other hand, a delighted President Trump tweeted, As I predicted all along, Obamacare has been struck down as an unconstitutional disaster. Now Congress must pass a strong law that provides great health care and protects pre-existing conditions. Mitch and Nancy get it done. 
a tweet aimed at the majority leaders in the Senate and the House next year. But the president may be getting a little ahead of himself since this ruling still has a long trip of appeals ahead before anything could change and only if today's ruling is upheld by the higher courts. I think it's important for people to know no change right now. I think that frankly the earliest we would see a decision would be sometime around this summer. Now, ironically, tomorrow, Saturday, is the last day for those who still want to sign up for covered California health care coverage. That would kick in on January 1st. Open enrollment continues through January 15th. Jeff and Crystal, back to you. All right, Dave, thanks very much. An actor on a popular Disney show has been arrested. What he's accused of doing. An Aeromexico plane was possibly hit by a drone while landing at an airport. You're going to be surprised by the damage it caused. A good Samaritan stops rolling cell phone video to help an officer in need. I'm Stacy Butler. Join me for that story coming up. Plus, taking matters into his own hands, how a local man in need of a kidney is hoping to find his match. Hey, everybody. I'm Garth Kemp. Welcome to the weekend. Your forecast coming up. Here's a look at the guest tonight on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert.